The sun has set officially on week number one in the NFL, and this is Kyle Brandt's favorite segment of the week because he gets to wear sunglasses. That's right. I go way back with those. I used to have the frog skins back in 1992, purple and black. I love them. It's time to shine a light on the game's brightest stars presented by Oakley. This is when we talk about guys that we believe will shine and be the brightest stars in week two, Shrakes. I'm going down to Baltimore, Kay, and I'm going with a player that, you know, I think is one of the greatest players of his generation. Maybe doesn't get enough credit. Do you guys know who holds the all-time record for games played as a Baltimore Raven? Hmm. Uh, Ed Reed? Not Ed Reed, not Mark Clayton, not Ray Lewis, not Joe Flacco. The single human being on this earth who's played more games as a Raven than anyone else is Terrell Suggs. Huh. Do you know who, after 16 seasons in Baltimore as a Raven, is now suiting up as an opponent and going back into that building this weekend? Terrell Suggs. Awesome. I am such a sucker for the guy they call Sizzle. He's one of my favorite players of all time, and I also think he's one of those guys who's in that Frank Gore, Philip Rivers vein from this generation. Dudes who have put up huge numbers, have great careers, and then all of a sudden the Hall of Fame debate's gonna come up and you're like, are we, is Terrell Suggs a Hall of Famer? He might be a Hall of Famer. Guys, I don't know if the Ravens are gonna honor Terrell Suggs before, during, after, or not at all in this game in some way, but I do think putting on the Jay-Z and Kanye song, Otis, during a timeout in the third quarter and letting Suggs dance on the field with whatever defense he wants would be quite fitting. That's what they did that whole season they won the Super Bowl. He would go out there and lead a dance, and it got everyone going. Here's the thing. Suggs still has it. Like, he's nasty. Mm-hmm. Last week he had two sacks. He looked great all summer. He's healthy, and he's paired with Chandler Jones. Mm. They have two veteran pass rushers in Arizona. This might be not only a farewell song for Terrell Suggs. This might be one of his best seasons. He's set to, to be having a huge 2019. I can't wait to see him. He's my guy I'm looking for. T. Sizzle, 134 and a half career sacks. Nice. My brightest star for week number two. Awesome, dude. Well said, man. Good job. I'll stay right in Baltimore. And you know what's lost in the Baltimore win this past weekend is the fact that Mark Ingram went off. Mm-hmm. And my dude looked faster than ever. Over 100 yards, two TDs. I know we got caught up in the touchdowns in the arm by Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. But this dude left New Orleans and said, you know what? I'm going somewhere to be the feature back, and I can hold it down. We're talking first down, second down, third down, fourth down. He is a true all-around back, and he got nasty with it. This was one of our favorite runs. Check out this power by Mark Ingram. And I know you're going to talk about him a little later in the show, Kyle, because he's running angrier than ever. But since 2014, he's had 36 red zone touchdowns. That's second over that span. And right now, I think he's one of those individuals that he loves the fact that we keep talking about other running backs when it comes to the best backs in the mm-hmm. game, but each week he's going to start compiling games like this, and by the end of the season, I guarantee you this, we will be mentioning Mark Ingram's name as one of the best backs mm. in the game. I love no it. No doubt about it. I also love Saints-Rams Sunday afternoon. It's a great game, and I'm looking at Michael Thomas, because before the season, we made some uh, bold predictions, you could say, and I think that Michael Thomas is going to catch Marvin Harrison's record for 143 catches in a season. I did the math. You need nine catches a week to beat Marvin, get 143. Why don't we just take a look at how we're doing after week one. Marvin Harrison down to the bottom, 2002, after one week was only at four catches, guys. Michael Thomas was at 10. So he is way ahead of Marv in that quest to get to 143. Now, Marv's going to get hot. He's going to get really hot. Are you on pace, guy? Yeah, I am on pace, guy, after one week. Marv's going to have some 15, 16 catch games. But in the quest of 143, I think Mike can beat Marv, and we're way ahead after week one. Watch him this weekend. I love that, Michael Thomas. I'll talk about another wide receiver. So Pro Football Focus made a list of their top team killers. Guys who just own other teams, like Andrew Luck and the Titans, when he was still an NFL player. Guess who was number one on their list, according to every metric? Who's that? Julio Jones Mm -hmm. against the Eagles. He takes care of business against them in six career games. He has just under 700 yards. In the last two games alone, he had 270 yards in two games on the road in Philadelphia at the link. I think he goes crazy against the Eagles. He's coming off a game where he was largely held in check by Minnesota and their double teams of him. But he needs 102 yards to break Roddy Roddy White's receiving record for the Atlanta Falcons franchise as far as yards are concerned. The last five games, guys, Julio Jones averages 134 yards a game. In fact, 
He's got the most 100 yards against, yard games against him. He does it pretty much every time. Let's take a look, guys, at consecutive games over 100 yards against one opponent in the Super Bowl era. Yes, God. he owns the Eagles. The problem is not in the moments that count, right? Shrakes 2017, let's take a look. Playoffs at the link. Of course he has a 100-yard game. Of course he has 16 targets. Couldn't but this is the play of the game right here. It's 15 to 10. Ryan, two, his guy. Julio in the end zone. Can you do it? Ugh. No. That, he had a chance to catch that ball. Couldn't do it. 2018 season opener in Philly. What does he have? A 100-yard game. A truck full of targets. Fourth down at the end. Ryan to Julio catches it out of bounds. So he needs to pull one of those things in, of course, when it counts. And I think this is going to be it this week. I think it's going to be the brightest star and make it happen. I love it. Got to finish. Yeah. That's a great, great back history. He's a team killer. Those are our Oakleys. That's oh. Will Selva out Shine there. Bright like we diamond. see you in the newsroom and culvert. Hey, what's going on there, Kay? And guys, future pretty bright there wearing the shades, right? Quick, KB, who sang that song? Always. Uh, Do you know? Will Smith? I don't know. I'm thinking uh, sunglasses right. at night. Corey Hart. Corey Hart. Corey Hart. Yes, yes. Right. yes Come on. exactly. We're on Rihanna. Uh, not him. But. I, either way, uh, mm. let's get to the uh, news. Twitter was having a field day on Thursday with the words Sam Darnold and Mono trending. There were, of course, jokes about how he contracted it and that it's something you get when you're in high school and in college. But the reality is mononucleosis can sideline Darnold for a while. He's definitely missing the Monday night matchup against the Browns and could be out several more weeks. So now Trevor Simeon is thrust into the spotlight. He last started 10 games for the Broncos in 2017, served as Kirk Cousins' backup in Minnesota last year. But it sounds like his coach and teammates are ready to rally around him. Our next man philosophy does not waver. It's about everybody doing their job. That's why Trevor's here. I mean, we, we signed Trevor specifically because his 24 starts over his career with a winning record, has a lot of experience, has been on winning ball clubs. He's has the respect of the locker room. I think guys, the, the reaction I got and the, the way that guys looked was, let's go. And there's their confidence there. Now, before this year's draft, when we had Patriots rookie Chase Winovich on the show, he was joking about the animated movie Tarzan and even introduced us to his mannequin friend Giovanni. That seems like lost days from a bygone era because he's now in Foxborough. And he's giving us generic answers like this. Say it isn't so, Winno. There's always areas to improve, and that's why we got great coaches and, and great teammates, and we're all gathering around each other just towards this effort and like I said you know, a couple times already we're taking things one step at a time one day at a time and we're looking forward to this opportunity this Sunday against the great Miami team no 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 Winovich clearly embracing the Patriot way when it comes to his interviews now even smirking during the session with reporters like he knew like yeah I'm being a little generic we need proof of life Wino. come on <laughs> proof of life we need to see you we need to know that you're alive you're not on the witness protection program. I don't like it. No, it's contagious. The Jets have mono and the Patriots have monotone. I don't like that at all. <laughs> oh, Come on, man. Where's the dummy you Look used to at hang you. Out? Where's the Tarzan <laughs> yeah. right. up? So Cam came dressed to kill. Thanks so much, Will, as always. But Thursday Night Football still came down to the final play. We'll talk about Cam. Did he pass our eye test? Nate, look. still in on that, Nate? You were yesterday. That look? Yeah. Which, which uh, porridge did you pick? The hot one or the medium one or the cold one? Had the angriest run of week one. We have a surprise on the way from Baltimore. Look at this dude. He was the only guy in the entire NFL who had over 10 carries and none for a loss or negative game. He was on fire.